tried something new. Um, my aunt passed away this year. I don't know why I'm smiling because it was really sad and I got this hat from her. This outfit actually is a tribute to her. This is kind of her style. So um, I miss you Auntie Maisie. So this week, I'm gonna start off by telling you a little bit about what's been happening. So we left off, we talked about cup and spoon and all these other things. And I want to tell you about my birthing story. All right, so brace yourself, <laughs> cause it might be a little long-winded. So welcome. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to my program, I am a mom of twin girls. We call them RJ Crew and each week i try to share a little bit about my journey as a mother and from time to time i have little um surprises with my mom mates who come in to share their stories as well so i did not have a delivery where i had to push but i had a cesarean section and i mentioned all of the little fun things that were happening to me leading up to the pregnancy well when i went in i had my I had my girls at the university hospital and I had a pre-scheduled appointment. Leading up to that, I had to take um, my COVID-19 test, did my COVID-19 test, was ready to go in and prepared. Um, just about a day or two before I was supposed to go in, I realized that twin B had decreased fetal movement. Now this is extremely abnormal because right throughout my pregnancy, both girls were really active, but twin B was especially active. Like she kicked constantly. You could see her feet pushing up almost into my chest. Um, and it was a little frustrating at times, but yeah, we played and she was, you were always knew that listen, this little one is going to be quite rambunctious. Um, I watched it and monitored it for the day into the morning, um, into about the middle of the day. Then I called my doctor. No, I have amazing doctors. I have the Harriot brothers, as I call them, John and Peter Harriot. So I reached out to Peter. He said, all right, Rochelle, hmm, come in, let's talk. I went in immediately, put me on the um, ultrasound, scanned, checked, waited. We... Um, provoked her we tried to stimulate her we nudged we pushed we did all we could and she just decided hey hmm, i'm not gonna be moving right now the heart rate was a little bit slower than was normal so of course i had to go to the university hospital early luckily i had already had my negative covid test so they got me right in and i spent two and a half days in the hospital, just monitoring her heartbeat, monitoring fetal movement. Twin A was fine, you know, she was still quite active and every now and then she push her head down into my bladder just to remind me that mommy, you need to go to the potty. Yeah, um, fun times. <laughs> but eventually the strangest thing, so when they, they strap you up to this machine, so they brought me to the delivery room or the delivery ward um labor ward and when i was in the labor ward they strapped me to this machine where they put they had put um so i had to know where the heads were so one head was here by my belly button which was twin b and twin a was all the way down there um so when they strapped the um monitor onto both babies and then they tidy around and everything and this is after all the checks and all the excitement of going to the hospital miss lady just decided that she was going to kick the monitor away and then she just started to move and kick all over again but to be on the safe side even though fetal movement had returned they wanted to continue monitoring her heart rate thank you so much dr kemlani she was the, the doctor there and dr maharaj two doctors that i remember because they were just so sweet and so nice to me um there were others but i remember those two and I stayed on the ward for two nights, then went home. Glad I did because I was a little bit anxious leading up to the to, to my C-section date. So being on the ward, watching and observing the other mothers, listening to how the nurses were just so patient, so caring, so kind, so compassionate, it set my mind at ease. All right, good. 
wonderful. The reason why I selected University Hospital is because it has the best reputation when it comes to twin deliveries, um, delivery of multiples, not just in Jamaica, but across the region and parts of North America. Oddly enough, they have a higher um, rate of survival rate. Good. So we get now back to the clinic. I head to the clinic, I sit down and talk to this now brother Harriet, John Harriet, which was my original um, doctor. And he said, all right, let's set the date, set the date for the 10th. Funny fact, um, I did it for the 10th because my husband's birthday is on the 10th of January. So I figured I'd remember the girl's birthday easier if they are born on the 10th too. Yeah, I'm lazy like that. <laughs> so um, once we set the date on the morning of the 10th i had to well two days prior again i had to do my covid test came back negative so i was on the um negative covid ward i'm just fixing my hat yes uh and when i went on the ward um again the nurses were so nice it's like hey you're back i stayed on i and i went on on the 9th which was the day before, well, two days before rather. I went on the 8th, was in there on the 8th, was in on the 9th as well. Um, and then on the more, on the night of the ninth, 9th, they said, okay, you can't eat anything more. You need to get up early in the morning to prep for delivery. All right, good. So didn't eat anything. Um, actually, I didn't really have much of an appetite. And in the morning I got up, I did my thing, I got dressed, I bed, um, I took out my clothes that I wanted to wear um, up, to the, up to the labor ward, yeah, funny. And packed up my stuff so that I could be transported onto um, the antenatal ward thereafter. And when we're, we're just before, after I showed and everything, then I'd get my enema. Never had that experience before wasn't painful wasn't uncomfortable but not something i definitely want to do again it's not like an everyday thing mm -mm. and then i was being prepped and coached um had to sign some forms had to do vitals had to put in my drip all those wonderful things and i remember this one doctor came in this was not dr kemlani this was not dr maharaj dr maharaj was doing the prep work and this other doctor came in to kind of brief me and prepare me for going into delivery and have me sign some forms and i distinctly remember this is where i want to focus today's um, episode she said to me that um you know that when it comes to delivery or priority is your life your survival so if there's anything wrong with the babies we just want you to know that your life will take precedence and your life will be our priority and um, not the life of the child or in my case the children um, and I said is do I have a choice in the matter can I choose the opposite what do I mean so I said to her well what I mean is I don't want my life to be the priority their lives are a priority so if a choice needs to be made in terms of whose life to save save them not me she said no this is hospital policy and you have no choice in the matter so this is how we operate I said okay fine I'll sign it but this is not my choice and I'm voicing it to say this is not my decision but you're telling me that this is hospital policy so I'll have to comply I don't know what happened but she was pretty uncomfortable with what i said because she spent the next 15 minutes lecturing me and i distinctly remember the part that she said that i found so hurtful um so i have been waiting patiently on the lord to bless me with children for seven years and this doctor was saying to me you know um you have to think about yourself in this matter um because your life is more important i mean you can you can just get up tomorrow and go ahead and have another baby um but you can't you, we, we, you can't we can't it's not that easy for you to survive and she was carrying on and she kept saying i mean it's no big deal you can get up tomorrow and have another baby women have baby or babies all the time so it's not like this is the most important thing <laughs> and 
I am listening to what she's saying restraining myself and trying to keep composed because of course they're injecting and doing all these other things and the enemy and the this and the that um but this lady is telling me after praying and waiting on the lord for seven years that this is just a random thing that this the, the, the blessing inside my womb is just something random and the life of these two beings inside of me are not as important as my own furthermore she's trying to convince me that having carried them for eight something months eight and something months and weeks whatever she's trying to convince me that i can do away with them easily um now i've when we got to about closer to 20 minutes in this lecture and i got really frustrated i stopped her and i said listen i hear what you're saying and i don't agree this, but what about your husband and if he has to have a say in it because i'm sure he would want you more than the children so i said let me tell you something this is something that i've discussed with my husband he and i feel strongly about it and we feel the exact same way regardless of whatever the outcome or the impact is we want our girls lives to be saved no you might not agree and I have no choice in the matter because you've said it's hospital policy, but you don't need to try and convince me because that is not my wish. Okay, then. And I think she was kind of taken aback by my answer and my stance, but it tells you that sometimes people are just so out of touch with your reality. You don't need to try and convince them. You know, you need to, you need to stand your ground sometimes. But... You don't have to try and explain yourself to everybody. You don't have to justify yourself to anybody. You know, you if you've prayed about it, you've thought about it, and we did, we prayed about it, we thought about it, we spent time meditating on it, and our decision was impacted by our reality. After waiting seven years, if you, if <laughs> I wasn't the only one waiting and longing for children, my husband was waiting and longing and praying with me, so we both, were conscious of the decision and the choice we were making in that moment. Now, now that they're here, I have no doubt in my mind that, listen, if it came down to it, we would have made the same decision yet again. Mm -hmm.